so today I'm going to be doing a video kind of you can think of it as like a Dior Sauvage buying guide. There was a point a couple years ago when Sauvage first came out where it was easy to buy and I don't mean easy to buy as in like physically purchased because Sauvage is a very popular fragrance you can buy it basically anywhere. What I mean by that is you didn't really have that big of a decision to make. When it first came out, obviously all there was was the Eau de Toilette. A few years later, we are now up to four different versions of Dior Sauvage. We have the Eau de Toilette right here. We've got the Eau de Parfum right here. We've got the Parfum right here. And then last, not really in this particular order, we have Very Cool Spray right here. So those are currently, at the time of this video, the four different versions of Sauvage, and the Parfum version just came out this year. So this video should stay relevant for hopefully a few years now. I don't know if Dior is gonna keep going with the Sauvage line. I mean, we've already got the three main ones, EDP, EDT, and Parfum. You know, I don't know what they're gonna do next, if anything. I'm sure they're probably gonna think of something because Sauvage probably makes them the most money, but as of right now, this video is going to be relevant and help you decide which one to purchase if you don't own any Sauvage yet. And one thing I wanna bring your attention to is in the description, I'm gonna have links to where you can buy a sample of each of these. So the EDT, the EDP, and the Parfum, you can check those links out down below, grab a sample of them, that way it can help you decide. I don't know if any website sells samples of the Very Cool Spray. If they do, I'll link it down below. If not, I'm not sure what you'd have to do about that one. So a couple things before we get into the video. First, let me know down in the comments which version of Sauvage is your favorite. Tell me, I mean, do you like the Very Cool Spray the best? Do you like the original Eau de Toilette the best? Do you like the new Parfum the best? Let me know what your favorite is. Second thing is, if you're new here to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Also turn on post notifications to give this video a like. Doing all that helps these videos show up directly to your phone and I post more videos just like this one, like six days a week. So if you're new, you know, make sure you get on that subscribe uh, notification squad and uh, don't miss these videos. So let's go and dive right into this. I'm gonna basically go through and cover all of these in the order that they were released and I'm just gonna give you my brief thoughts on each. I'll talk about performance and just kind of give you my personal thoughts on each one. We're gonna start off with the Eau de Toilette Dior Sauvage. So I love Sauvage and in all of my videos I just include the Eau de Toilette just because, you know, I really like it. But that may start to change as, you know, I do have the new Parfum. I picked up a bottle of the EDP. Finally, I never owned a bottle of it for the longest time. I smelled a sample of it back when it first came out. Just didn't get around to picking up a bottle. So I've only owned the Eau de Toilette up until fairly recently. And I wanted to pick all these up and do a full video on comparing all of them. So Eau de Toilette. This is what it looks like right here. This is the lightest bottle of them all. So you can kind of see through it. Probably doesn't show up on camera, but it's relatively see-through. I've also got a full 100 ml bottle right here. Um, it's hard to see the level, but this one is full. And I've also got a small 60 ml bottle that's basically full. And then I also have two other bottles of the Eau de Toilette in my, uh, on my shelf. So I do own a lot of this particular version, Eau de Toilette. That just goes to show it's one of my favorite scents. Now let's go and get into this. So the Eau de Toilette, this is gonna be the one that probably most of you own and probably the one that is worn the most. This one opens up with a nice bright bergamot note mixing with a pepperiness and a lot of ambroxan. So this one is fresh and clean all the way through. Don't really get much of a sweetness from this fragrance. It's just invigorating. It's in your face. It's very peppery. It's very strong. It's very sharp basically the whole way through. And the reason why this gets a lot of hate is because to a lot of people it comes across as synthetic. So kind of sharp and just kind of chemical smelling, kind of unnatural smelling, I guess is a way to put it. This doesn't smell like chemicals, at least not to me. I'm sure the haters will disagree otherwise, but just, just unnatural smelling. And that's very much the case. You would be 100% correct. This is a fragrance based solely off of ambroxan, which is an aroma chemical that's not a natural thing that you go out and get. I mean, ambergris is something that is natural, but we're not talking about ambergris. The real thing here, we're talking about ambroxan. And the way it comes across in this fragrance is very metallic. 
and very strong mixing with the peppery note and that sharp tart bergamot in the opening it can be something that is very very strong right off the bat and it can kind of put some people off out of all of the versions though this one and the very cool spray which we'll get to in a minute are going to be the youngest smelling fragrances and what i mean by that is they're going to be the ones that you would more likely smell on younger dudes maybe on teenagers maybe on guys in their early to mid 20s just this is kind of a fragrance that you know is going to appeal to the younger audience not only for the wearer but also for the people just in the general public when it comes to like getting compliments and that sort of thing the eau de toilette more likely than not is going to fit into that category the best and from my experience this one is the best performing out of all of them so again along with the very cool spray which we'll get to in a minute this one very very strong stuff longevity over nine hours on my skin sometimes pushing it up to 10 maybe even 11 at some points believe it or not on my skin longevity projection very strong as well pushes out of my personal bubble it just makes itself known and it's also very versatile you can wear it all year round more suited for the spring and summer months though in my opinion and now at this point the eau de toilette is going to be the cheapest version just because it was the first one it's been discounted a lot there are three versions ahead of it that dior is going to be pushing more of their marketing towards so the eau de toilette you can usually find it floating around for way cheaper than the other ones if you check on like the facebook groups and other places so now let's go and talk about the very cool spray so this this one is kind of interesting and for the longest time i had no desire to get this i'm like you know why do i want a fragrance that is in an aerosol can i mean it's kind of annoying because you can't tell how much is in here like shaking this like you you, you can't hear anything i mean you don't know what's in here it, for all i know it could be empty obviously it's not because i just bought it but it could be empty and so you really have no way of telling how much you have left Oh, and one thing I do want to mention really quickly since I'm going to talk about the sprayer on Very Cool Spray, I'm going to talk about the sprayer on the Eau de Toilette. I, from, for the most part, I'm pretty sure the Eau de Toilette Parfum, Eau de Parfum sprayers are going to be the same. These bottles do all come equipped with a magnetic cap. The Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum magnetic cap is really nice. It's super smooth. It's super nice. The Parfum magnetic cap is a little bit of a different story, which we'll get into in a minute. Here's the sprayer on this, and I'm sorry this video is getting long. We just kind of have a lot to cover, a lot to cover here, so I'll, I'll get on it. I promise. Here's the sprayer. Let's see. Are we in focus? Here is the sprayer. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. So that was a nice mist. These Dior sprayers are a beast. So now we're going to talk about the very cool spray sprayer. Again, this is like an aerosol can. It is an eau de toilette, so you know it is an actual eau de toilette fragrance. It's just in an air spray. So let's see what we have here. Oh, yeah. Do you see that? That's just like me pushing it down for a second. So very, very strong. Sprayer is a lot better than on any of the other bottles just because of the aerosol nature that it has. And yeah, it smells nice. So very cool spray, to be honest with you, is probably my favorite out of all of them in terms of the opening. The opening of this one is awesome. It's a lot more bright. It's a lot more crisp. It tames down that like peppery nature just a little bit and kind of brings forth the citrus, the bergamot, the grapefruit a little bit more. Again, it is still Sauvage, and you can obviously tell that it is. Still a little bit of a peppery nature in there, but not nearly as much as in the opening of the Eau de Toilette. I personally love this very cool spray. Again, I didn't think I was going to like it. I didn't think it was going to be much of a difference. I thought it was stupid, but I really like it. This one, again, opens up more bright and fresh. This kind of also leaves a little bit of a tingling feeling on your skin too, which is nice. A lot of people throw this like in the fridge or something, and then throw it in their gym bag and then when you get out of the workout you can spray it on and it leaves you feeling cool and refreshed that's pretty cool so very cool spray this is going to be the cheapest one this comes in at around fifty dollars or so for this bottle size whatever bottle size this is uh it's a 100 mil so this is a 100 mil comes in at like around 50 55 dollars from reputable sellers so that's going to be the cheapest out of all of them. Really nice price. In terms of how much you get out of this, I have no idea. Again, I just mentioned it is an eau de toilette, but because of the type of sprayer that it has, it pushes out a ton of fragrance. So you know, you're going to have to be mindful of that. This one I think is best suited for summertime, spring, again, the warmer months. It could work all year round, just like with all of these 
but more suited for the warmer months because of how fresh it is. Performance on this one is very, very strong as well. And that's another thing that surprised me. A lot of people say that this is the strongest performing version out of all of them. And I do actually get better longevity out of this one than I do from the Eau de Parfum and the Parfum. The EDT, on the other hand, it's kind of a toss up. I get very good longevity from both the Very Cool Spray and the EDT. So I would say the winners in terms of performance from this battle is gonna be either the Very Cool Spray or the Eau de Toilette. Um, one of those two, it's kind of a toss up at this point. They both last so long that really it gets to a point where it's like, why do you even need it to last that long? And both do project very strong as well. Ooh, I'm kind of in over my head here, all this Sauvage going on. Okay, so the winners of this uh, battle in terms of performance is gonna be these two, Eau de Toilette and the Very Cool Spray. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Eau de Parfum version. So I really like the Eau de Parfum version. What this basically does, and I've talked about this in other videos, is it basically sweetens up the Sauvage DNA just a little bit. It, not very much, um, not like the Parfum, which we'll get to in a second, but it does take that Eau de Toilette, very cool spray, DNA smell, just adds a little bit of a sweetness and basically rounds off the edges a little bit. Basically takes away some of the abrasiveness that Sauvage Eau de Toilette is known for. So basically if you have a box, you know, just a square, what they do is they basically go in and they just round off the edges a little bit. So before Sauvage Eau de Toilette, very harsh, make it a little bit more smooth and really, in my opinion, it makes it just a little bit more mature, also makes it a little bit more appropriate for evenings out and also for cooler weather. The EDP has just a little bit more substance to it in terms of its depth because of the sweetness, and that sweetness gives it just a little bit of a more mature vibe to where I think this one would be great for evenings out and situations like that, going on dinners, going on a date, just any sort of thing like that where you're kind of dressed up a little bit, this one would be great. And I also think this is a great pick for the fall and winter time. Again, the Eau de Toilette is gonna work great in the fall and winter as well, but the added touch of sweetness that this one has really, I think, makes it appropriate for the cooler months. So performance on this one still is good. On my skin, longevity, I'm getting on average of about eight hours. Projection-wise, is gonna be relatively on par with the Eau de Toilette, just a little bit closer to the skin, so it does still push out, and this one can fill a room easily. Keep in mind, it is a um, Eau de Parfum, and typically the higher you go in concentration, so Eau de Parfum, Parfum, Extrait, and all that, the less they're gonna project. You know, like fragrances like an Eau de Toilette and an Eau de Cologne are gonna project more, but generally not last as long. So this one, for whatever reason, doesn't quite last as long as the Eau de Toilette, but it also doesn't project as much either. But it's not by a whole lot. It still does have very good performance. And finally, moving on to the last version of Sauvage, and that one is the new Parfum. So yeah, this guy, this is the hot new release. This is the hotness, guys. This is the hotness. This is the trending Sauvage Parfum. And if you kind of hear that, I'll shut up. The cap is a little bit squeaky and it also feels, I don't want to necessarily say lighter, but it just doesn't quite operate like my Eau de Toilette bottles and like the Eau de Parfum. So, and I have heard that there is some quality control issues with the Parfum. So if you get a bottle don't think that it's you know fake or wonky or something if the cap doesn't quite perform like your older bottles it's just it's just Dior being Dior and probably cheapening up something somewhere so yeah the quality of the magnetic cap isn't quite as good but who really cares and I'll stop playing with it so it doesn't annoy you who really cares about the magnetic cap at the end of the day it's about the scent this one is going to be the sweetest and overall this one is going to be the most different out of all of the four. This one takes it kind of in even more of a different direction than the EDP. And I really enjoy it and I really appreciate it a lot. This Parfum version has somewhat of a fougere quality to it. And if you guys know me, you know I love my fougere fragrances a lot. They're it's becoming one of my favorite, you know, uh, fragrance categories is, you know, nice fougere scents. And this one kind of fits in there a little bit. And that makes it even more mature. So if the Eau de Toilette was too young for you, it smells too just, you know, young, the Eau de Parfum is better, but still kind of too young for you. You want something even more mature while still kind of maintaining this mass appealing Sauvage DNA, the Parfum would be for you. So if you're a guy in your 40s and your 50s 
and you know you just want something mature you want something to kind of represent your age and you know just kind of fit into that fougere quality the parfum would be a great pick and i love this one i really really do it's kind of indifferent some people don't like it as much because it does stray a little bit from that sauvage dna that we all know and are familiar with but it does it in such a way that still maintains that dna while also making it a little bit more mature so in my personal opinion I would recommend this for you guys who want something more mature. If you want somewhat of a fougere type of scent, go for this one. If you are a kid in high school, a kid in college, again, a kid in your early, mid-20s, even late 20s, it, it all just depends. I would probably not recommend you to get the parfum. And of course, if you like it, by all means, go for it. You can, even if you're a... In high school, you can wear this one. Who cares? If you like it, do it. But I'm just saying generally, being that you're in that age range, again, I'm 20 years old, so you know I like the Parfum, but I also like the Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum. Typically, other 20-year-olds are going to like the first two I mentioned earlier and also the first three, the very cool sprays. Well, they're going to like those more because those are a little bit more young. They're a little bit more shower gel and they're more blue fragrance smelling and those blue fragrances are what is mostly popular among the younger crowd. So if you're after compliments, if you're after positive attention and you're a younger guy, the Parfum could work, but there are better options, those being the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, and the Very Cool Spray. But I honestly think that what Dior did with the Parfum was very smart, was a really nice move on their end, really takes this DNA and makes it more mature. And that's kind of a trend that I have witnessed a lot this year. Other fragrances like Davidoff Cool Water Intense, Eau de Parfum, that one is more mature. Eternity for Men, Eau de Parfum, that one's a lot more mature than the Eau de Toilette. And now the new Sauvage Parfum, this one, like I said, more mature, more like refined overall, basically takes that DNA, just adds a little bit something different, a nice twist. Oh, so this whole room smells like Sauvage. I have it on this hand, I have it on this hand. I'm actually wearing it because I, wanted to wear it so yeah i'm kind of savage overload here and i've been talking about it for my camera says 22 minutes by the time i edit this it's going to be shorter so yeah that is savage that is a savage buying guide hopefully i covered every oh there's the parfum also doesn't perform the best longevity on my skin about six to seven hours so not bad but not nearly as good as the other ones and it does sit a lot closer to the skin as well. Not a skin scent, but it does push out. So, you know, it does work, but it is more refined. And it kind of performs more like a gentleman's fragrance would. Again, all these other ones, they kind of scream out. And that's not going to be for everyone's personality type. If you are a refined, mature guy, you don't want that. You want it to be discovered. And the Parfum has the performance to suit that. So hopefully this answers any of the questions that you may have. If I miss something, leave a comment down below and I will hopefully try to reply to it and help you out. But this is basically it. You know, I tried to give you my full, somewhat unbiased thoughts on all of these. Of course, I do love Sauvage, so I, I couldn't be completely unbiased. And, you know, it's hard for me to say which one I think you should buy because I don't know you. I don't know your age. I don't know what you're into. I would say for the most part, the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum are going to be probably your two best bets. And again, the very cool spray. That one's kind of tricky because of the weird sprayer. Not everyone's going to be down for that. I mean, if you have some extra money, you can get the very cool spray, throw it in your gym bag or something. But it's nice having an actual spray bottle to tell how much you have. Uh, so the Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, I think are going to be your two best bets. If you want something more mature, the Parfum is a great way to go. But I don't think everyone is going to think that it's really worth it. You know, the performance, again, not the best. So really just kind of depends. And remember, there's going to be links down below. You can sample all of these, kind of see what you like. So that should help you out. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, let me know in the comments what version of Sauvage is your favorite. And if you have any other questions, let me know. Also, if you want to see more videos like this of me taking, you know, basically a fragrance line and comparing all of them and telling you which one I think is the best, let me know down below. Let me know some ideas, some other fragrance lines I can do that too. So that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, give this video a like, and that's going to be it for me tonight, guys. So have a great rest of your evening. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Take care.